Let's move on now to chapter 11, motion in a circle, circular motion. So already in the previous chapter, when we looked at motion in a plane, we, we were introduced to motion that does not move in a straight line. But so we saw, uh, we saw some kind of curved motion with projectile motion. So that's a, it's a bit of a nice kind of um, segue or introduction to motion in a circle. So we have seen some kind of curved motion before. Okay. So now let's, let's, uh, let's look at what it says over here. So we want to look at, we want to distinguish between two types of motion. One is translational and the other is rotational. Now translational motion, uh, we have alluded to it in earlier chapters, but translational motion is basically this kind of motion. What do we mean by this? Um, it is motion where as the object moves through space, every single point on this object moves in the same way, in the same trajectory. So if I take that point, or if I take that point, or if I take the center of mass, or any other point on this object, and it moves through space, can you see every point has the same, um, same trajectory, identical trajectory, okay, same path. That is translational motion. So whether this, this object moves um, horizontally, vertically, even it moves like this, as you can see, every point is moving along the same trajectory. What about rotational motion? Rotational motion is something like this. We take that same object and it, there's a spin. It rotates, okay? And now every point on this object does not follow the same trajectory or the same path. This point over here follows this um, circle, okay? This one follows this circle. And then, of course, we have the center of mass, and we know that, um, well, I hope we know, and we will get to know, that this object rotates about its center of mass here, okay? All right, but you can, in, mo in real life, you get a combination of these two. You get a combination of translational motion and rotational motion. So, for example, here, if you take this, uh, this bowling pin and you throw it, it will, it will have a combination of rotation. As you can see, um, this bowling pin was upright there. Now it's pointing there. Now it's pointing there. Now it's pointing there. And it keeps, this, it keeps rotating around its center of mass. But at the same time, there, there is some aspect of translation and some aspect of rotation. Okay, so it says different points follow different trajectories. So this is, this is what happens often in real life is the combined translation and rotation. Okay, so now we also like to introduce another term called the axis of rotation. And this we see in this one over here. Um, the axis of rotation obviously is where all the points rotate about, the point about which all the points are rotating. Okay, so all points on object trace circles centered on the axis of rotation. Okay, so the so that's that's what that is. Let's see. Um, so what are we going to begin now uh, to look at? is this this kind of motion we're going to look at this kind of motion over here which is circular motion okay um, we begin our analysis of rotational motion by describing circular motion okay so what are some examples of circular motion um, a spinning cd uh, i'm not sure if any of you still know what a cd is Okay, a compact disc that's spinning around. Um, if, you're, if you're on a roundabout, busy spinning, 
you keep repeating your your um, motion you keep coming back to the same spot again and again and again that is circular motion okay uh, if you put a uh, stone on a string and you whirl it around you swing it around in a circle all of this is circular motion it takes place in a plane remember a plane is a two-dimensional uh, area and um, we will see how we can describe this in the next sections. Okay, see you.